most of our patients and our staff were really skeptical about doing a reality TV show because they've been watching Jersey Shore and the Kardashians and they're like, whoa, you know, that's not us. Why are you doing this, Steve? Why are you doing this, Andrew? Oh my God. I have a very close personal relationship with the cannabis plant. For me, cannabis, it was love at first sight. I knew intuitively it wasn't an evil plan. It felt good. It felt right. I've been very active in the cannabis reform movement. I was one of these lucky people who finds out at a young age what it is that's important to them. I'm an agent of change who's working to bring the truth about the cannabis plant to the rest of the world. We were approached by about 10 different producers who wanted to do some type of reality show. And we turned down every single one of them because it was evident to me that they had some type of agenda. They either wanted to create artificial conflict or they just wanted to show really sensational images. They weren't truly interested in our story. Um, until we met Braverman Productions and the Discovery Channel. Attention Harborside, attention Harborside. The time is now 10.55. Harborside will be opening in five minutes. Five minutes. You know, we created Harborside as a model. And so the idea of being able to present our work to every American was really exciting to us. Attention Harborside, the time is now 11 a.m. and we are now open. California legalized the medical use of cannabis in 1996. Ten years later, I opened Harborside Health Center. State law allows patients with a doctor's recommendation to purchase and possess cannabis. We have over 94,000 registered patients. Yeah, this is really good. Which makes us the largest legal retailer of cannabis on the entire planet. Thanks, Thank you very much for your time. Have a wonderful day. We were able to establish a level of trust that allowed them to be embedded with us, not just at our facility, but in our lives. Uh, every detail of our personal <laughs> lives are, is revealed because we wanted to show who we are, not just what we do. Because there's a lot of stigmas about medical cannabis patients, that we don't work hard, that we're a bunch of stoners, that we're lazy, that you know, we're really criminals or drug traffickers. And all that's a lie that's been perpetrated by the feds and the media. And this is our chance and our patients and our staff's chance to shine. And they told us that he has Dravet syndrome. And Dravet syndrome is the most extreme catastrophic epilepsy out there, they say. It hurts. Nothing seems to work. He's about to have a seizure. He's twitching right now. Come on, Jaden, come down, come look at that, look at that, look at that, shimitara, shimitara. Yeah, Anna, Jaden, come on, come on, come on, Jaden, come on, come on. I've heard there's other kids with epilepsy that uh, try medical cannabis and are doing much better. Uh, that's why I, I want to try it. He's got a, a young son who's going to be using, trying medical cannabis for severe epilepsy, and they need high CBD medicine. So we have CBD in um, two of our tinctures at the moment. Mm -hmm. This one is a vegetable glycerin thing, so mm -hmm. it's a bit sweeter. Okay. It's not so sort of shocking. Yeah. How does it feel when you're on it? Well, CBD is non-psychoactive. So, so it's not like THC whatsoever. Correct. You don't feel a quote-unquote buzz. I'd love to try that then. It's awesome what you're doing. Thank you. And we're here for you. I appreciate that. I could tell. Andrew, thank you very much. Thank you for your time. Thank you. When President Obama was on the campaign trail, he promised not to use federal law enforcement resources to circumvent state medical cannabis laws, and shortly after taking office, made that official Department of Justice policy. Unfortunately, in the past year, they have reversed that policy, and they are now uh, going to try and close down places like Harborsite. California law says that there's a medical reason that people use marijuana. Federal law says that marijuana is illegal at all times for all purposes. That's the conflict. Federal law, as any first-year law student knows, is supreme over state law. Anybody that owns a commercial marijuana store in California could be the subject of a federal search warrant at any moment. What we are doing is risky. What we are doing is dangerous. It could put me and my family in a lot of peril. 
but I believe in it. What we have seen in the past year is a multi-agency coordinated assault by the federal government on medical cannabis. It's taken a number of different forms, both civil actions and criminal actions. So we see the IRS is now on a nationwide campaign of aggressive audits against medical cannabis providers. Uh, they are um, applying a tax rule to medical cannabis dispensaries that is not applied to any other organizations or businesses. The Treasury Department has been contacting banks nationwide and forcing them to close the bank accounts of medical cannabis organizations. The Alcohol, Tobacco, and Firearms Bureau has contacted every gun dealer in America and instructed them not to serve medical cannabis patients. And of course, we've seen threats and raids by U.S. attorneys, not just in California, but also in Montana and Washington State just in the past few weeks. Me and my brother talk about this all the time, this multi-agency coordinated approach. It makes us feel like we're terrorists or something, or we're criminals, or no one else is treated this way. And all we're doing is trying to relieve the suffering of sick people out there. And yet, we can't even get a bank account? And it's dangerous when people have to use cash to do all their transactions, they can get robbed, they can get kidnapped. All kinds of terrible things can happen to them. That's why we don't have cash-based economy in this country. There's a reason for it. I mean, we're placed in this kind of impossible position where on the one hand the IRS comes to us and they want complete financial records, as do our regulators in the city of Oakland. Uh, and on the other hand, we have the Treasury Department going around and getting our bank accounts closed, making it virtually impossible for us to compile the financial records which the IRS and our regulators are demanding. So this is clearly not an effort to tax us or to regulate us. This is an effort to tax us out of existence, uh, to force us to close our doors. We are really furious and feel betrayed by the Obama administration's reversal of policy on this issue. Uh, myself, my brother, all of our friends, all of our patients, not only did we vote for the president, but we also contributed heavily to his campaign. And I can tell you that his reversal of policy is costing him millions of votes. Not only that, the Democrats are creating an opening for conservative Republicans. We are ready to support anyone who supports our issue. We are single issue voters, unfortunately, because when you're faced with federal prison for what you do with the living, that's what you become. You become a single issue voter. So we are ready for any candidate, national, state, and local, to support and to give contributions to if they stand by us. Mm -hmm. You know, we're not going to vote for somebody who thinks that we're criminals. That's just not going to happen. We're really pleased now that half of the Republican presidential candidates have endorsed our position on medical cannabis, which is allow the states to make their own laws on this, on this subject. Mm -hmm.